Hello everyone, it's me, Sanjay Vasu, back again for another video. This time I'm doing it on Cambridge Primary Checkpoint for Science Paper 2, October 2023. You may use a calculator, let's start. Question 1. The picture shows part of an organ system in the human body. This is the lung. A. Name this organ system. So the lung is an organ, and the organ system to which it belongs is the respiratory system since it helps us to breathe. That's the answer. B. Which gas moves from the lungs into the blood? Well, the gas which moves from the lungs to the blood is the one which is used by the body. And what is used by the body? Of course, oxygen. So that'll be our answer. C. Look at the picture of an animal. Suggest why this animal is likely to have lungs similar to humans. Well, we can clearly see that this animal is a bird. And birds, the only thing they share with humans in terms of properties is that the animal is a vertebrate. Birds are vertebrates. So we can see that this animal is actually a bird. And the only feature that birds share with humans, which is given in this list, is that it is a vertebrate. So the only reason why this animal could have lungs similar to humans is the fourth option here. The animal is a vertebrate. The other three are illogical since they simply don't share that property with humans. That's the answer. Question two, glucose dissolves in water to make glucose solution. The table shows the maximum mass of glucose that dissolves in 100 grams of water at different temperatures. A, describe the relationship between the temperature of the water and maximum mass of the glucose dissolved. Explain your answer using ideas about particles. The relationship in this case, as you can clearly see from the table is as the temperature increases, as temperature increases, the maximum mass of glucose dissolved also increases. And the explanation for this it's simply going to be because at higher temperatures, particles have more energy. And this is the idea about particles which you're talking about in the answer. So at higher temperatures, particles have more energy. That's why these glucose particles are able to collide with the water and therefore dissolve in it. That's the answer. Let's go to part B. Identify the solvent and the solute in the glucose solution. The solvent and solute are dash. In this case, the solvent is a liquid in which the solute dissolves. So this will simply be the water. And the solute is the solid which dissolves inside the liquid or solvent. And in this case, it's simply the glucose. That's our answer. C. Dissolving glucose in water is a physical change. Explain why dissolving is a physical change. The criteria for anything to be a physical change is actually that it does not produce any new product, which is chemically different. That's why they're called physical changes and not chemical changes. So in this case, we have dissolving as well. And this does not produce a molecule different from glucose or water. It just dissolves the glucose in the water but does not actually react. Therefore, this is physical change. So no new substances or no new chemical substances are formed in dissolving. It's just the solute dissolves in the solvent and creates a kind of suspension. That's our answer. Question three, Pia draws a diagram of an electrical circuit. A, this circuit is parallel circuit containing six electrical symbols. Complete the sentences with the names of electrical symbols. The circuit has only one dash. So we have six electrical symbols here, which I've all circled in red now. And out of these, there's only one cell. By the way, battery is the wrong answer. Battery is more than one cell in series. So you have to write cell. 
Now the circle has only two dash. We can see that these two are, of course, two in number. Therefore, we can write the name of these two, which is switches. Even if you write open switch, it's also fine. The answer just has to contain switches inside. The circuit has only three dash. Well, there are three lamps in the circuit, which is given by this symbol. And therefore, we can just write three lamps. That's our answer. B. We are changing the parallel circuit to make it a CV circuit. Draw the CV circuit containing the six electrical symbols. Of course, there are multiple ways that we can draw the CV circuit, but I will show you just one of them. By the way, if you're wondering, these are not electrical symbols over here. These are just dots showing that the wire is splitting into two parts. Over here, over here, and in these two, it's simply joining back together. Two wires are joining into one. That's why they have dots, but they're not actually symbols. So we have to use the same six symbols to form a CV circuit instead of parallel. First, let's draw the cell, which is like this. Now, since this is a CV circuit, they all have to be, well, in CVs. Therefore, we can draw the first switch here, like this. And then, of course, continue the wire, the first lamp, continue the wire, second lamp, continue the wire once again. And then the third lamp. And then we can add a switch over here. And we can draw wire to connect with the switch. And these five elements actually can be in any order, but they just have to be like this in the circuit, in series with no branches like these ones over here. Now oh, that'll be our answer. Let's go to question four. A. Complete the rock cycle diagram by writing in the names of the three types of rock in the correct boxes. So let's start with the top one. The I provide before this is molten rock, cooling and crystallizing. This is actually the formation of igneous rocks because they form from molten rock or in other words, lava from volcanoes. Now weathering and erosion followed by high pressure this kind of rock formed by weathering and erosion as given is simply sedimentary rock. And why is it called sedimentary? Because of course they're formed in sediments. Now after heating and high pressure of sedimentary rock, we get the third type, which is metamorphic rock. And actually, even igneous rocks can be heated and given high pressure to form metamorphic rocks, but that's just not given in this diagram as an arrow here. Usually it is sedimentary rocks, however, that change into metamorphic. Now for part B, fossils of dead animals are sometimes found in rocks. Describe how fossils are formed. All right, so fossils are formed inside sedimentary rock. So firstly, some dead matter of animals get stuck under sedimentary rock, or in other words, sediments, because the rock has not formed. So dead animal matter gets stuck under sediments. Then the soft parts of the animal, like the skin, decay or decompose so the soft parts of this matter or of this animal decompose and once they decompose the hard parts or the bones of the animal are replaced by minerals to form fossils. That's the answer. Let's go to question five. Anastasia finds pictures of some animals. 
eight, she used the pictures to make a key. Complete the key, one animal has been done for you. So first, does the animal have a shell? If we have yes, which two animals have a shell? We can see over here that snail and scallop have a shell. And now for a second question after the yes, is the animal inside two shells? We can see that the scallop is actually this thing which is partly visible inside the two shells. So if we have a yes to this question, it is a scallop. And if it's no, it is a snail. Now, as for does the animal have a shell, the answer is no. Let's go to this question. Is the animal star-shaped? Yes means, of course, it's a starfish, which is already given. Now, as for no, does the animal have eight arms? Yes or no? So you can see that octopus has eight arms. So the octopus has eight arms, and that's a yes. For a no, it's the shrimp. That's the answer. Let's go to part B. The snail is a herbivore in a food web. A producer starts the food web. Complete the sentence. The source of energy for the producer in the food web is the dash. Of course, it's the sun, because the producers are always plants or photosynthetic beings. And they use photosynthesis to gain energy. Where does this energy come from? The sun. Only then they can do photosynthesis. C. A toxic substance is found in the soil. Describe how the toxic substance moves from the soil into the body of a snail in the food web. So firstly, plants, which are the producers, plants, or the producers, take up the toxic substance into their shoot. Now, the second part of it is because snails are herbivores, as given in part B. Snails then eat the plants. Therefore, its energy and the toxic substance, which is present in the plant, in the plant, moves to the snail. This is what you need to describe and this will be our answer.